this interface called the car element. Okay? And that there's an accept method on that where we're going to pass a visitor class into it. It's actually an interface. So the car element visitor interface, which is defined above here, basically visits every kind of element that we have in our object hierarchy, right? Okay? So so if you look like, so visit wheel, visit engine, visit car. So we got three parts. Okay? So here's wheel, and it implements car element, and here it's, well, it implements car element, right? So it has a name property, and then there's our implementation. Oh, and yeah, there's a constructor, and then there's a, our implementation of the um, car element interface. So there's our accept. So what happens, what's going to happen is, if I want this, um, thing to do some kind of behavior. I'm going to create a visitor class, I'm going to pass it in here, and then I'm going to call the visit method on that thing that was just passed, I'm going to pass myself into it so it can do something to me. All right? That's kind of the visitor pattern. This will be clear when you get to the example, if you're not familiar. So, um, I, think, I think it helps for, for starters, just imagine that the class didn't have this visitor stuff. You know, imagine that there was no accept method, and the class had no idea about what a visitor is, then, then where would you be? So far, we, it looks like we'd be about the same place one way or the other. But stay tuned. Yeah. All right, so, so there's our wheel. So here's an engine. Our engine also has a name, um, constructor. And then there's our implementation of the accept method. Same thing. We're just going to get passed in a visitor, and we're going to pass ourselves to the visitor. All right, here's our car. So our car has um, an array of elements here, and these are four wheels, front left, front right, rear left, rear right, and a, an engine, okay? And it also has an accept method and the implementation there for our car. It's a little more complex, so we're going to visit each of the elements in our array that we have there, and it's going to also give the visitor itself, okay? All right, so... So I think the key thing there is that the elements inside the car got wheels, four wheels, and an engine. Those are private. The car is not letting the outside world see, you know, through properties or any other way, what the elements inside the car are. So even though they may have public properties, they're not visible if all the outside can see is the car. Yeah, so let, let's not talk visitor, and let's say, what, well, if I wanted to print out all the elements of my car, what would I have to do, right? So I would probably, maybe I'd have a method on my car that says print or whatever, and I just output all this stuff. Now let's say I add another element to my car, right? The body style or something like that. Then what? Or I add, I want to add the make of my car, right? Then what, right? So I'm always modifying this class, and I'm not supposed to, right? So, um, so introduce, here comes the visitor, right? So the car print visitor implements our car element visitor, and what it does is it um, there's our visit method, right? And we have a visit method for every single type that we want to visit, right? So what happens is so I got a little. So here's, I'm going to run a console application here. So I'm going to create a new car, and then I'm going to say car.accept the new car print visitor. And that print visitor is going to visit all the things inside of my car, and it's going to output some stuff, right? Okay. Pretty cool, right? So if I wanted a, I don't know. What else can you do with a car? Disassemble or something? I don't know. I don't know. So you can create different visitors, and what, what you would have to do is you would just, you know, go to this guy, create a new kind of visitor, and create a visit method for all the different car elements, and then you're ready to go. So, kind of nice thing about this pattern is everything about printing a car is all in one place, right? So, all right. So that's object oriented. So now, you guys good on this? You understand, like the problem, and all right. So well, let's... Well, the, th the thing to notice, though, is, is, is the obvious thing that the car, the visitor, and the interface you can define for it, and then every class is going to implement that in, <coughs> that visitor. 
has to know all about car elements and has to know what all the different car elements are. If you create a new kind of a car element, you're going to have to modify this interface and then every visitor out there that, that uh, uh, implements that interface is going to have to be modified also, even if the a particular visitor doesn't need to do anything with a particular kind of element. Yeah, we're, we're gonna. I got an example of extending this in two different ways, and we're gonna see the amount of work that's involved here. So, so it starts to look like the blob anti pattern when you when you have all this information about all these other classes getting stuffed into a into a, into a, a master class like this. All right, so let's look at um, using discriminated unions to model this instead. All right, so here here we have a discriminated union called car element. And um, engine of string, wheel of string, and a car is just a list of car elements. What's interesting to point out here is uh, the discriminating unions, they can reference themselves, right? So this is how you can build a hierarchy. And you can, it's very easy to build a tree structure using a very small discriminating union. Yes? Oh, bigger? If you considered right associativity or left or to not to read the same thing, that, that a car of list car elements, in fact, we consider the term <coughs> LAR parsing would be like a right associative type of type of thing, or it doesn't doesn't apply. Did you ask the question again? Uh, it, it doesn't matter. I probably did. It doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so so here, um, all right, so here's our print card. So this is going to model our print visitor. Okay, so this is a function. You see, it's a recursive. The rec means it's a recursive function, and then we're going to say match element with. All right, so we're going to use our pattern matching. So we're going to say match a car that has no, nothing inside of it, no a list of empty elements or, or an empty list. Right? So we created a car with no elements. Right, so. And when that happens, we're going to say, hey, you know, a car without parts? What the heck, right? Then what it's going to do is going to match, look for a car that actually has values inside of that list of car elements, right? And what it's going to say, hey, we're visiting the car. And then what it's going to do is it's going to just iterate through that list of parts. And here's where the recursion comes in. It's just going to call print car elements, okay? So when this pattern hits a wheel, Printfm visiting wheel w, right? Visiting engine, okay? All right, so this here is a function that prints a car parts, okay? So, and then down here, here's where we instantiate our car. So this is just <laughs> some, some syntax for an array here, or I'm sorry, the list with the brackets. So wheel front left, front right, all that stuff. And let me throw this into the interactive See right there. So the, we changed. Uh, I got up there. I thought we're wrong. And that was on the bottom, I think, in another example. Whatever. So here we go. All right, kind of nice. So now let's do a couple things. All right. Let's say that I want to add a make to the car. Okay. So let's go to. Uh, here first, so uh, excuse my poor touchpad <coughs> stuff. All right, so let's say I want to add you know, public uh, string make get uh, sure. We'll pass it in here. I do a lot of this private set now and read only stuff in my C sharp because of F sharp. I just, part of the immutability thing. It's something you can do it with your C sharp stuff too. And when your colleagues say, why'd you do this? You can tell them why it's a good thing. All right? All right, so we're going to add make. And then we want to make sure we want to print out. Um, so we want to print that out, right? So I need to go to my. Um, car print visitor, and I can say 
visit car and I can say console dot right line. Maybe I'll just say visiting, you know, visiting a uh, whatever was car dot make. All right. And then let's see what. Where are the blueberries? Oh yeah. All right. Sorry. I have to go pass that in. All right, so there it says, uh, visiting poor English Audi. <laughs> German cars, they're allowed to be like that. So press any key to continue. All right. So uh, let's see what it's like. That wasn't so bad, right? That wasn't bad at all. But uh, I'll admit. All right, so let's go to visitor.fsx. And, okay, well, let's look at our thing here. Now, I, I, I called a car was just a list car elements, right? And I'm like, oh no, I don't have a type or anything. Uh, how am I going to get a name in here? Well, let's do something real simple. All right, let's just say it's a tuple. A name, a string, and a list of stuff, right? Now, look what happened to our pattern, right? So it says, oh, I don't recognize, I don't see a constructor that matches just a list for my car, so I'll fix that. And I don't care about the name here, so I'm just going to do that. And I said, oh, you got to fix this one too, Mike. And I said, oh, okay. Um, well, let's see here. So visiting um, a S. All right. And so I changed this. Oops, sorry. Don't want to go to. And so this is now something like that. And oh, stay open. So this is visiting Maui. Okay. So C sharp versus F sharp there. Um, Pretty, pretty even, I'd say. Not a real big difference, right? Okay. Except that it, I think it is significant, though, that if the compiler forced you to take into account the fact that there's now another element inside the car, you've added that string, and, and you're trying to match the car with its contents, and, and you have to match. You that's, have, that's true. You have to either do something with it or explicitly say that you don't care to do something with it. That's actually very true. Whereas in the in the C sharp code you could pass right over it not in even silence think. and not even notice it was there unless you tap the IntelliSense while you were in the code. I'm sure none of you have ever done this. But I don't know how many times I've done all this work creating all of this stuff and then I forget to actually show the user what that work was. Right? Has anybody ever done that? No? But this would actually help prevent that, right? The pattern matching, because it does. It forces you to think about that and decide whether or not you want to do something with it. All right, so let's look at uh, the next case here. So let's add a new, new part, okay? So we're going to add a class. So let's call it, um, so let's create a class called um, Called body, and in order for this to work with our framework here, we got to inherit or implement this. And the pattern is is it, uh, is it this? And let's um, so what's wrong with that? Oh, you know what's wrong with that? I don't have a visit method that accepts a body, right? So let's go do that. There it is. All right. And let's public string name. All right. 
Nope. Okay, so I try to compile, I can't. Why? Because my carport visitor is an implementing body. So that's a good thing, right? So I say, hey, you added a part to the car element visitor. Now you got to do something with it in our print visitor, right? Okay? So let's do that. Visit. I don't know about you guys, but this repetition, this looks like a lot of duplication to me. Console.rightline.checkline. Visiting. All right, now let's. All right, well, oh no. I actually have a dumb question. Is this visitor pattern in general considered something to be touted as a good thing or? Something to be avoided and stay away from. This is a gang of four pattern. You're right. Yeah. So um, it wasn't good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Four out of four gang members can't be wrong. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I, it depends on your use case, right? I mean, if you really need it, like if you're using, if you have classes that maybe you don't have a lot of control over, then uh, I, don't, I don't know. I think, well, I, I think sure. it's good to remember that, that whenever you talk about patterns, Patterns are supposed to be solving problems, and, and the Gang of Four book is unsurpassed at, at explaining what the problem is that each pattern is, or what the set of problems is that each pattern is supposed to be able to solve. And there's actually several different problems you could solve in the visitor pattern. And the one we're solving here is I have a graph of objects, that, but the, only the outermost one is visible. And I want to do something with all the ones inside, and I can't see them. So I need a way to, pro and, and I don't want the base, you know, or the parent class, the car, to be responsible for for. You know, it's got it's got enough things to do already with the parts that are inside it. I don't want it to have to know what it's supposed to do uh, with each individual one. I want something outside of all these classes to uh, take care of doing that instead. So that's it. I mean, having 